Hello and welcome to the channel. What we're going to talk about today is some of the new data loss prevention policy support inside of the Power Platform. Let's go. So let's talk a little bit about why this content is important. On this channel, I have talked about governance in the past. In fact, I have a three part series and I'll make, be sure to include those links in the description of this video. As part of that content, I do talk about DLP, data loss prevention policies. Now, Microsoft has recently improved or added to the DLP feature set. This feature set is now in general availability, and I wanted to make sure that I shared this information with you folks. Now, what is new? So number one is you can block certain connectors. So within some organizations, they may want to just flat out block a specific connector, maybe it talks to some consumer based service, and they don't want to take any chances with it being used by their employees. Now you can go ahead and do that. Another thing that you can do is you can manage the HTTP connectors without needing to use PowerShell. So this was something that was supported um, earlier, but you had to use PowerShell. No longer is that the case. It's natively in the box. And so we're gonna go ahead and explore that here in a bit. Before we dive deeper into the content, I wanted to let you know about an emerging community found at serverlessnotes.com. This is a community resource that covers best practices, tips, and latest announcements built on contributions by technology enthusiasts from around the globe. On serverlessnotes.com, you'll find content related to Power Automate, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Service Bus, Azure Functions, and much, much more. Serverlessnotes.com is brought to you by Serverless 360, a portal that is focused on operations and support for Microsoft Azure Serverless resources. Now, this is a complementary tool to the Azure portal, and it helps organizations in supporting Azure Serverless applications. You can find out more about Serverless 360 at serverless360.com. All right, so what do I mean by blocking connectors? And we'll certainly see this in the demo here shortly. But what happens is when we go to configure a DLP policy, we have three data groups, business, non-business, and blocked. Previously, we only had support for business and non-business. Blocked is new. So the whole idea with DLP is you can kind of think of it as buckets or containers. And when you take connectors and you put it in a bucket, what it means is that any of those connectors that are in the same bucket or data group can talk to each other. So I could build a flow that includes any connectors that are part of the business data group. Similarly, I can still build a flow that includes connectors from the non-business data group, provided they're all in that same bucket. Where we run into issues is if I try to mix and match across buckets. So if I have business, you know, say my email might be certified as being a business connector. And then I've got Gmail as being something that's considered non-business. If I separate those connectors into those two buckets, they can't talk to each other. And so that's what was the previous, uh, you know, configuration or capabilities. We've now introduced a third bucket called blocked. If you put a connector into blocked, it just flat out can't be used. So maybe I don't want to enable Gmail. I put it right into block, it can't be used. If I go ahead and try to create a flow that uses Gmail, boom, doesn't work. And so this is something that is new as part of these most recent uh, feature set that's been released. The other thing is managing HTTP. Previously, you had to go ahead and create like a, what was called a V2 policy, and you had to do that using PowerShell. Well, that's no longer the case. You can now manage your HTTP actions um, inside of these policies. Some admins don't like the HTTP connector because it essentially allows you to connect to anything that has an API. And so once again, you can now choose how you want to go about using the HT HTTP connector. So let's go ahead and let's just see a very quick demo. All right, so here we are. We are in the Power Platform Admin Center. You do need to be an admin in order to administrate these features. That can be either at the environment scope or at the tenant scope. And in this case, I am at the tenant scope, but the same principles apply for environment scope. So here I've got data policies. Notice the preview tag is now gone. I can go ahead and click on data policies. Now I've already started one and the edit experience is very similar to the 
new creation process. So let's just go ahead and take a quick look. In this case, my policy is set to the dev environment and I'm going to name it accordingly. And then what I can go ahead and do is assemble my buckets as we talked about, right? Business, non-business, and blocked. And in this case, this is very much an organizational decision, right? Like Microsoft can't, you know, know exactly all of the systems that are in your organization, nor are they going to dictate like what you should and shouldn't do. It's really for you to create a governance, governance experience that best aligns with your requirements. Now do notice in this case, I do have a series of just arbitrary connectors. And then I've also included big maps here for the demo. Uh, but uh, don't read too much into it. These are just for example. Now, when we talk about defining scope, we can set it at all environments, at multiple environments, or exclude certain environments. And what this really aligns to is if you had, say, an, a tenant-wide policy that even new environments, when they were created, they would automatically inherit that policy. Now, in my case, I'm only going to provide it for specific environments. And in this case, it's only applied to my dev. I can go ahead, just do a review, and I could then go ahead and click on update, and that essentially sets my policy. Okay, so let's jump over to the maker experience. Note, I'm in my dev environment where I do have that DLP policy enabled. I could go ahead and provide the same flow in a different environment, and it wouldn't get blocked because in this case, I've set my policy to be at the environment level. So right now, there's nothing, there's no issue with this flow. It's currently enabled. It doesn't conflict with any sort of DLP policy. But if I go ahead and now try to add Bing Maps, let's see what happens. So let's just get a location. And here we're just going to say Calgary. And we'll go ahead and we'll click Save. Now, what we see, and it's right away, you saw that pop up right away, is that the flow checker has detected that this connector, this action that's been added, does conflict with our overall DLP policy itself. It's not gonna actually be enabled. And so as a result, we need to go ahead, we need to make changes uh, in order to basically have this comply. So that could be either removing this action or it means talking to the admin to say, hey, what's going on? I have a valid business scenario for this. Um, but as a result, uh, that is how these policies do get enforced. And in that case, that was a situation where we used the block data group in order to enforce the, this basically this governance. So that concludes this episode. I hope you found this useful. Uh, I know this is a feature that a lot of organizations have been looking forward to. All right, thanks for checking out this episode once again. If you're not following me on Twitter, I would encourage you to, to do so. You can follow me at Weirzy. If you are subscribed, thank you very much for subscribing. If not, go ahead, click that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the action I do post weekly. And naturally, if you do like this video, likes are always appreciated. Thanks, and we'll catch you again soon on the channel. Take care.